Making a faux wood grain look on stainless steel is possible by using alcohol ink. Let me show you how. So you're definitely going to need your stainless steel tumbler and um, you're going to need alcohol blending solution. This is key to making the getting the look uh, of faux wood grain. Um, a paintbrush or two and this is going to help later on and then the applicator is an alcohol ink applicator um, and these little felt pads. You can find this in rectangle or round, either doesn't matter. And you will we'll probably only use one of these little felt pads for this project. And then you'll need some alcohol ink. And I'm going to use brown colors in caramel and in sienna. Also ginger. And I think I will also add sepia. This, these four colors are not mandatory. You can use whatever combination you like. and But I would choose at least two different browns. And this is going to result in a really cherry red color. You're also going to need um, Envirotex or some kind of resin. And uh, we will also be using this. This is the spinet tumbler. Um, this is a very important. You can plug this in with the USB or you can plug that USB portion into an, um, a charger outlet. You also want some kind of um, mat to collect the resin when we get to that step. And also some kind of tape, masking tape, something like that to mask off the top and the bottom of your, of your stainless uh, tumbler. And uh, you will also want some white spray paint. So mask off your tumbler where you want it, and then you're gonna put one or two coats of white spray paint on it um, and let that dry uh, at least overnight. That's an important step to achieve this look because the wood grain will not show up on just stainless. You need a white base to get the, to get the wood look. Absolutely an important step. Okay, so let me show you how to achieve the wood grain look. So we're going to start with the applicator tool, which is just that piece of felt that is stuck to a bit of Velcro on a wood block. Squeeze a few drops of the lightest color of the wood shade that you like and just apply it back and forth on the tumbler. We're going to do this in like a quarter to a third of the cup at a time. And you see how when you make a stroke mark, if you push down and then lift off before you end the stroke at the other end of the tumbler, you get um, sort of a streaky look. And when using shades of brown and then you add another color of brown on top of it, those colors start to mingle a little bit and the streakiness starts to look like wood grain. And you can see it's quite easy to achieve. So you're really just sort of swiping, swiping that color back and forth, lifting up at the end. Vary your pressure, experiment a little bit. Now is the time, right now, while you're de designing the wood and coloring the, the wood look, this is when you play with it. Alcohol ink is very forgiving. You can take away or add over and over and over until you are happy with it. Now I'll add a darker color and you can see how dramatically that can change the overall look, just, just the color alone. So really it's just about swiping the colors back and forth. And you can see as, each, as you add each color, it interacts and changes the color underneath of it. And as, as it wants to push away the color under, and that's how we get these um, ridges or, or um, streaks. Isn't that cool? Again, you're lifting off. You push down in one direction and then you're lifting off before you get to the end of the tumbler and that can result in sort of a wood look. Okay, so let's talk about how to make a knot in the wood. This is where the alcohol blending solution comes in and it's very important. Now I'm working on a glass mat and I'm going to use it as if it's a palette. If you don't have this, you could use a simple disposable craft um, cup or paint palette or anything like that. 
So I squeeze a little bit on the, on the a little petal um, on the mat, and then I'm going to use a paintbrush to soak up some of that blending solution. And then you simply paint sort of an oblong circle in whatever size you want your the middle, the center of your knot to be. And you go back and get more blending solution and you paint just outside of that, making it a little larger. And again, you're sort of doing an oblong circle or, or, or an oval, if you will. Um, and you're just and as you do this, the blending solution is kind of taking away, if you will, some of the alcohol um, ink color that you laid down. Then you want to kind of pull it or drag that down in sort of a stripe fashion to the bottom of the mug. Then you can go back to your um, applicator and using the same technique you did before, you can go right over it and go around the knot. If you don't like what you did, if you're not happy with the size of your knot, you can simply use the applicator and, and essentially wipe it away. Um, if as long as there's either alcohol ink or um, blending solution on that little pad, you can redo. Um, so there's you, you really can't make a mistake because if you don't like it, you can just wipe it away. So once you sort of have the knot the way you like it, watch how I'm going to follow around the edges of the knot instead of going straight down so that the wood grain looks like it's flowing around that knot in the wood. And then you can just fussy with it a little bit, adding more alcohol ink where you want and or using the other applicator to, to get more of the wood grain streaky look going on. Very technical terms. <laughs> and you can see this is, this is one of the reasons why the tape is there. Um, it keeps, it contains your artwork or your design to the tumbler itself. The tape is also is also there so that when we get to pouring the resin, it will protect those portions of your tumbler from getting resin on them. The wood grain tumbler could obviously be done in other colors as well. There's every color under the sun in alcohol ink choices. So now I'm putting a little color of alcohol ink on the white side of my glass mat just so you can see it and picking that up with a paintbrush and doing the same technique but now with a darker color to show you how you can make your knot darker instead of lighter. Or you can go back and forth between the light and the dark to really get um, um, a ring or a knot in the wood that has a lot of different uh, layers because each addition adds another little ring. And then going back with the applicator tool working around the knot, not over it, but around it. Look, that looks so realistic, doesn't it? And it's very, very fast, it's very easy to do. Like I said, this is the time to fussy with it. If there's portions that you don't like, this is when you need to fix it. Once you put your spray seal on and your resin, there's no going back. So. Um, this is when you play with it. This is when you adjust. I think this wood grain tumbler is, is going to be a great gift for Father's Day or um, any occasion. Uh, but also, it is the finished look is really amazing, and I think anyone would love to receive this as a gift. Okay, when you're done, you're just going to peel off that little felt pad. We're done with that. That's disposable. And like I said, I only used one. Um, and then we can uh, return the alcoholic to wherever you store them. I like this little alcoholic storage case because it holds them perfectly in place and they don't get lost. And then to clean up your glass mat or anything that you've used that's non-porous, you can use some of that same blending solution. Um, I put it in on the paintbrush and on the mat, and then I will just wipe that away with paper towel. Very easy to clean. Another thing you can use to clean up is uh, hand sanitizer. You do definitely want to have a protected surface to work on because alcohol ink definitely can stain porous surfaces very easily. I have a little bit on my hand, and I'll use some of that same blending solution to just clean up my hands as well. 
hand sanitizer also would work. When you're done with your alcohol ink design, you need to spray seal it and then let that dry overnight. When you're ready to, to set your resin, we need to set up the spinet tool first. I've set that on top of the glass mat and then she made this other mat, which is a non-stick craft mat on, to on top of that as well. The spinet has a little dial on it, which allows you to enlarge in or um, shrink the little tines there that fit inside the tumbler. And that is so, depending on what size tumbler you have, you can make it fit. So push it onto the tines there and maneuver the dial back and forth until you get it all the way on and then tighten it up so that it's perfectly steady on the spinet. Take your time with this step. Make sure that spinet is holding your cup level. That's very important. Once you pour the resin, there's no going back. <laughs> the, it has a dial on the back side and you can adjust the speed. This is, I'm putting it, going to put it on low. And I'm just going to look at it from all angles, look at it underneath. You want that, you want to make sure that it is as level as possible. Again, that's very important. One trick that's handy is to use a tapered paintbrush or some other kind of shim. I've put that underneath the entire blue platform of the spinet and that helps level it out for me. If that, it, You could try other things as shims, but you just want to make sure it's level before you even begin the resin. Then for the resin, it's a two-part process. You have a hardener and the resin itself. You're going to need a couple of disposable cups that are absolutely clean and you're going to need a couple of stir sticks. These can simply be popsicle craft sticks. And you'll need a third disposable cup to put the mix into. So you want exactly the same amount of resin in one cup as you do hardener in the other cup. And you will have a stir stick for each of those. They need to be separate, not, you do not use one stick inside with the other product. So one stir stick for resin, one stir stick for hardener, and then you're going to pour that into your third disposable cup. This helps make sure everything gets thoroughly mixed. Do not use your stir stick from one into the other. And you're just simply going to follow the directions on the packaging. This is, and you're going to use the exact same amount of resin per project. This. This portion of, this, of putting together the resin is the same process as you would for any resin project that uses the Envirotex type of resin. Okay, then we're pouring the hardener into the resin, which has its own stir stick. And now we're gonna begin pouring the resin here. So we put it all in, into one, and then you're gonna stir that up. Stirring slowly is important. You don't want to work in or incorporate bubbles. You will a little bit, but you want to try to avoid that. I may speed up the time here on the stirring, but that's just for the sake of you not having to watch it. But you want to do it slowly. And then before you begin spinning, again, double check that your, your spinet tool is working properly. Um, you've got your mat down, put some gloves on, and then pour. You're going to pour on a small amount at a time. Use the, use the craft stick to smooth the resin over the entire surface of your tumbler. Some people like to use their gloved hand instead of the popsicle stick to smooth the resin, and you can certainly do that if that feels right to you. You want to kind of get an even coat. Don't try to chase the resin as it as the spinet turns it around. That's its job. This it will the, the area that you're wanting to fix or to smooth out will come back around again. You have plenty of time. Don't rush it. Let the spinet do its job. Let it spin slowly, and it will come to you over and over again. And you're just going to keep pouring resin until you have the whole thing coated and use the popsicle stick until you feel that it's smooth. Periodically check under the underside of your spinet tool, make sure that the it's flat and even, that you don't have resin traveling to the top or the bottom, because otherwise you're gonna have sort of a 
um, a lump in that section or in that side of the resin cup once it's done. So continue smoothing and adding resin until you feel like you've got it completely covered. And then if you notice that you have any bubbles, and you probably will, use a heat tool. Don't use it for a long term. You're going to do it in short bursts, 15, 20 seconds at a time, because the heat is going to heat up the resin, and you'll notice that it begins to flow around the cup faster. So if you do it for a long, elongated time, the um, resin can get away from you. So just a little bit at a time. You don't want it to get so thin that it's all pouring off of the cup faster than it's drying on the cup. But what the heat does is it helps to pop the bubbles. So you're going to do that in the first, shortly after getting your pour done. But once once you feel like you've gotten all your bubbles, you're going to put the heat tool away. You won't you won't be using that again while it's on the spinet. Monitor the spinet for a while to make sure that everything is flowing correctly. The spinet is not, the, the spinet is, is continuously turning. Um, I've shored up my mat a little bit as some of the resin was, was pooling and I was in fear of it running off of the mat. So I stuffed little shims and things underneath the mat sort of to create a, a kind of a bowl shape so that the resin stayed contained on my mat. I let that go for about six to eight hours or overnight. When you think that it's done, before you even think of touching the cup, I saved my little resin cup with the, the leftovers in it, and I to make sure that it was ready to go, I tried to pull the popsicle stick out, and if it broke, I knew that the resin was, was set enough that I could take it off the spinet. And then I want to show you, I've turned off the spinet now, and I want you to see the mat that I used. Now that the resin has dried, look at how easy it will come up. It just peels right off of this nonstick mat. It's actually kind of satisfying, honestly. <laughs> and you just wad that up and throw that away or save it for another project if you want it to melt it down. Okay, and then you're gonna remove your um, masking tape. You can clean up any edges if you need to with like, al with, like alcohol. And then this needs to um, set for another about 40 to 72 hours to fully cure. If you would like to add a sticker or a vinyl sentiment or something like that, what you're going to do is choose your sentiment and, or your sticker, place it where you want it, and then you're going to have to do the entire process of resin pouring over the top. That's important. You need resin under and on top of any kind of embellishment like that. And that's it. That is how you get a faux wood grain tumbler. Mm -hmm.